uh, what I'll do is that I'll start my class already. Now I take uh, this opportunity to welcome each one of you to this particular class. Uh, my name is David Miner. I know uh, this is a mixed group. This is a mixed, mixed group, uh, but uh, all in all, um, David Miner, I'll be taking you for this particular unit. So I welcome you to Zitek University. And I'm so happy uh, we have met for the first time. What I can say is this. Uh, there is no, uh, we cannot do introduction because for each and every one of you, starting from on my screen, we have the first person called Michelle Ngoge and the last person being Mohammed Abdule. We cannot do introduction, all of us. Uh, it being the first time that we are meeting. But uh, what I can say is uh, welcome to Zitek University and Happy New Year. This is an, another year that uh, has given us. Now, I want you to understand this, that this is communication skills and this is a common unit. It's common throughout the university. It's common to every diploma year one, semester one. So any diploma year one, semester one, this is a common unit. And this common unit, it has been divided. There are those students who will be taught by Madame Winnie Otuar, Madame, Madame Winnie Otuar. And there is that group that will be taught by Mr. David Maina. I have two groups that I'll be taking through communication skills. And uh, Adam Winnie will be taking another group. I think it's one group, communication skills. Now, today being the first day, I was talking with Madam Winnie and uh, we were not able to plan accordingly so that we can separate these two groups. But in future, we are going to do that. We are going to separate groups. There are those groups that will be taught by Madame Winnie, and there are those groups that I'll be handling. But all of us are doing communication skills. Now, that one, we are going to do it in future. Uh, so in future, you might find that uh, you are being taught by Madame Winnie or and in future, those whom I'm taking through, you might also find that it is me who is teaching you. So whenever you find this, don't be shocked. Usipigwe na putua ushindo kwa ni kunaenda aji. Mimi nimesha kuambia. Ya kwamba leo, kwa sababu nilisiku ya kwanza, I will teach the first topic. Then we are going to plan on how the groups are going to be separated. Because there are those groups that will be taught by Madame Winnie. And there are those groups that I will take them through communication skills. Why do we have to separate these groups? Because communication skills is a common unit and it is taught across the university. And the students are usually so many, so many, so many. We are talking about 600 and above students, 600 and above students. So kuna ile group ambo itakuwa inafunzwa leo, na kuna ile group ambo inakuwa inafunzwa, Thursday, as far as I'm concerned. Also, there is that group that was supposed to be taught today at in the morning. So having said that, what you need to do is to look at your timetable and check who is teaching you. Check on your timetable. Ninani anakufunza communication skills. Usione akomba ni maina anakufunza, Mr. David ndi anakufunza, alavu unenda kuingia class ya Mr. Ya Madam Winnie Oduar. Madam Winnie Oduar is our, is our lecturer and we're in the same department. So be very careful when you're joining communication classes. Check from the timetable who is taking me through this particular unit. Then once you check, it becomes very easy. It becomes very easy and you're also going to have a very good flow. You're going to have a very good flow. 
Like I realized that DDA, uh, James Njoroge, you have been taught by Madam Winnie, but Leo, kwa Leo, tutafunza communication skills vile iko. So next week, maybe, we will be having those particular separations. Now, having said that, we, uh, we are so many groups. We are so many groups. I cannot mention them right now. There are so many. There are over 10 groups in this particular class. So I don't want to mention them because of time. And already we are so much behind in terms of time. So what I'll do right now, I'll just share my screen and then we start our class. I will share my screen and then we start our class. Okay, before we start our class, let me let me let me stop sharing my screen. Eh? I want to advise you this, eh? because you are our first student. You are this is your first year, your first semester. There are some things that are required of you. Number one, you are required to get to class on time. Get to class on time. Secondly, or to log in to the portal on time. Secondly, you are supposed to attend all your classes because if you don't attend 75% of your classes, chances are you will be denied to do the exam. If you don't attend 75% of your classes, you might be stopped or you may be barred from doing an exam. So attend 75 and above your classes. Thirdly, um, ensure that um, ensure that uh, you do the activities that you are going to do. For example, you'll find that I'll give you activities. Today, I'm going to give you two activities. I'll give you a discussion forum, and I'll give you a quiz. Ensure that you do those activities. Upon doing those activities, that is when your attendance marks automatically. If you fail to do one of the activities, say for example, you fail to do a discussion forum and you expect the system to mark you present, the system will not mark you present. All these things have been synchronized together. That when you do activity, a discussion forum, and you do what we call a quiz, then everything uh, after some time, it's not immediate, the system will mark you. Like for example, this class is supposed to end at at two, it's supposed to end at two. So by Sanane, the system will have marked you present or absent, depending on whether you did the activities or not. Now those activities must be done within the time frame. must be done between what time? Between 11 and two. So don't come telling me, Mualimu, I did not do activity this, extend for me time. That one will not happen. I will not have, I'm not going to extend any time to you because I've already, I'll clear my lesson well in advance where, uh, and give you enough time to do those two activities. That is the discussion forum and uh, what we call the quiz. You cannot do the quiz because it is the last one before you do the discussion forum. So you have to start with the discussion forum and then do the quiz. Once you do those things, then the system by 2 p.m. will mark you present. If you don't do any of this, then consider yourself absent, even, if, even though I can see you, even though you have attended my class, consider yourself absent. I hope that one is clear. So at the end of the lesson, uh, I'm, I'm expecting every one of you to attend to those discussion forum and to attend to those quizzes. All those quizzes, I mark them. Another thing that I want you to do is make sure that whenever you join a class, wherever you are seated or wherever you are, you are in a place where there is no noise, a, a, a place where it is, uh, it, is, it is free of noise, a comfortable place. You must have a pen and a, uh, and a book to write down the points that have been written down. Apart from that, I will also share a recording of this particular class of or a class of the previous class of the same nature. I will share it on the portal. So those who will not be able to join the class today will have to listen to the recording. 
so that they can be at par with the rest of the people. All the notes are on the portal and will be released immediately after class. Notes zote ziko kwa portal na nitakuwa ninazirelease wakati nime maliza class. I will be putting them open so that you can see them on your mobile phone or on your laptop if you are using a laptop and you can download them wherever, whenever you want. So that is what I can say for now. So I wish you all the best in your academics and I, I hope you're going to follow all the nitty gritties that are required, the rules. For example, the whole of this semester, by the end of this semester, you will do two assignments, assignment one and assignment two. At the end of this semester, you will do two cut, cut one and cut two. Make sure you do them because all this will be combined with your exam and we will have a final grade for you. So if you miss assignments and cuts, thinking that the most important is the exam, you are very wrong. This is a university. The most important thing is not even an exam. It is the coursework, the cuts and the assignments. So if you do the exam and fail to do the, uh, the cuts and the assignment, that exam becomes a null and void. I make sense quite too. So you repeat the whole semester. You repeat the whole unit. So next semester, unarudia kila kitu. Kuanza kufunzwa tena from topic two, mbaka topic ya mwisho, na kuanza kufanya assignment na cuts then. So that's how serious and important cuts and assignments are. Let me repeat that for that person who has just joined. I have said, in this semester, we are going to have two cuts and two assignments. And anytime I put a cut or an assignment, I'll be communicating to you. I will not be ambushing you. I will not be telling you that is cut one. No. Nitakuwa ni nakuambia mapema. Nakuambia ni meweka cut one na ni mekupea one week. Nitakuwa ni nakuambia next week, but one, we have a cut two. So be ready. Or cut one is going to be there and it will take one hour. So I'll be communicating to you in advance. So make sure you do those cuts and assignments. Because if you don't do it, you will be given a retake at the end of the semester. You don't do cuts and assignment, then you sneak and go and do the exam. That exam will be null and void without cuts and assignments. So you'll be declared to do a retake. Retake simply means kundi kwa darasa, soma tena, fanya hizo cuts na umalize. Na hau utafanya atizote pamoja, tutakua tunenda na wakati. Kuna wakati wa cut, kuna wakati wa assignment, kuna wakati wa like exam and so on and so forth. So having said that, I think I've taken uh, enough time to explain all this to you. I wish to start my class, unless there is a question. Any question? Mary Wanja, good, mor good morning. Morning, Trader. How are you? I'm fine. I am saying hi because you were the first person to join this class. Okay, thank you. Yeah, keep the keep up with the spirit. It's good to thank join you. classes early because if you don't join a class early, you may end up floating and even hating that particular lesson. See, the About the discussion forum, will we do the, the Zoom class? Somebody is asking. No, you're not going to do the Zoom class. You just post your answer. Like, for example, there'll be a question. Then you discuss that question. You post your answer. You post your response to that question. Good morning. Kutakuwa na class sanane. Which class now? I don't know about sanane. The only classes that I know that I'm supposed to be having for communication skills for different groups is on Wednesday today at 11 to 2. And also tomorrow I have another class for a different group from 8 to 11. Those are the only classes that I know. About two, I don't know. So check your timetable clearly and 
uh, find out when are you supposed to have a class. Usikuwe kukua confused. That's what I started by saying. Angalia timetable yako vizuri. Usijipate uko katika the wrong group. Sasini tunamaliza semester, umekuanga tu kwa wrong group. Unakuja kuniambia Mr. David, Mr. David, blah, blah, blah. I will not listen to you. So check your timetable now properly. Know which, who teaches you communication skills. Ni nani na kufunza. Yes, uh, you are talking about somebody saying, excuse, there is an information I got that one should register for this class. Yes, that is what we are working on. But today we are not doing any registration. That's what we are working on. Starting next week, maybe you will be doing some registration. And uh, we are also planning, instead of doing registration, that we may, we may have different classes at different times. So that is a it is on the pipeline. Discussion questions are answered here in the Zoom. No, it is not here in the Zoom meeting. It is in the portal. You are ZDS Zitech Digital School Portal. That is where you do the discussion. So I will explain about the discussions once we get there. Uh huh. Once we get there, at the end of the lesson, when I'm giving you those activities to do, I'll be explaining about them. Where do we get the timetable? The timetable is on the portal. The timetable is on the portal. Let me show you where the timetable is. Let me share my screen. I be able to share. Let me share my share my screen. Just give me a minute, I share my screen with you. Now I hope you can see my screen. So this is how the portal looks like. Like for example, if I click on my courses, so even before I go to my courses, you can see teaching exam, teaching exam, teaching and exam timetable. This is where you get the time. So when you click on teaching the exam timetable, this is what up. You are going to find timetable. Let me click on teaching and exam timetable. When you click on teaching and exam timetable, this is what you will get. You will get January to April teaching timetable. This is Nairobi City Campus. Then you also find January teaching timetable, Thika Road Campus. You click on it, it downloads. January teaching timetable, Mangu Campus. You click on it, it downloads. You go to January to April teaching timetable. January. When you click on it, uh, this one is for which campus? April, online, those who are pure online students, you click on this, it opens. PhD student teaching timetable, it is there, and so on and so forth. So this is where you do, this is what you do. You go to teaching and exam timetables. You click on that. Once you click on that, it opens here. You check your timetable, like for example, uh, those who are enrolled in Zika Road Campus, Utakuja will click HAP. Those who are enrolled in Town Campus, this is which one? Mang Campus, you click here. Those who are enrolled in uh, 
enrolled in you are a pure online student and we have a other ways kanyanga shule at siku moja you click here it opens and you check when you are supposed to have a class so that's a, that's where you find your time tip i hope i've answered the question that person So I think now we can start our class. So let's let, let me share my screen so that we can start our lesson. Now, uh, I take this opportunity again to welcome you to this particular class. Today is lesson one, topic one, and topic one reads introduction to communication skills introduction to communication skills. So if you can visit your portal and check the topic, the topic reads introduction to communication skills. Now, when you talk about communication skills, communication skills is part of our daily lives. Just like breathing, communication, not communication skills, but communication. It's part of our daily lives. It's just like breathing. That when you talk about breathing, Sometimes, many are times that you breathe and you don't know you are breathing. And else somebody reminds you, do you know you are still breathing? That's when you confirm, hey, Nakweli ni na breathe. The same case with communication. Communication is like breathing. You communicate even when you think you are not communicating. For example, the way you sit down, you still communicate. Those who the microphones are on, can you switch them off? Uyo mjama microphone yake iko on. See, I switch off. Because if you don't do that, I'll just kick you out. Cynthia Ewalan. There is also Daniel Gishuke. There is also Kennedy Kimanzi. Your microphones are on. Can you switch them off? Let me switch them off for you. You only switch on your microphone when you are called upon to speak. If you are not, not been called or uh, to speak, switch off the microphone. The first thing when you join a class is to switch off your microphone. Okisha join to Maramoja if you switch off your microphone. It's as simple as that. So communication is part of our daily lives. That's what we have said. And it is just like breathing. That even when you don't think you are communicating, you are communicating. Even when somebody writes you a text message and you say, I am not going to respond to that text message. By not responding to that message, you are communicating. Kwa mfano, uko na rafiki yako, msichana ama kijana. Umekuwa wapenzi kwa muda mrefu is your boyfriend is your girlfriend every now and then you tell you communicate via phone and you communicate via text and whatever means now you have written a message and this person is not responding by not responding to that message it means a lot it means huyu mtu amenikasirikia huyu mtu ataki stories zangu huyu mtu labda ako busy Ama huyu mtu is in a position where he cannot communicate. That's what it means. Even when you don't communicate, you are still communicating. Communication happens every now and then, consciously and unconsciously. 
For example, when you come early in class, it communicates about you. Like uh, this lady that I've just said hi to her. She came early to class. It shows that she's eager to learn. There is also that person who came late. It communicates for those who came late. Maybe you had technical challenges joining the class. Or maybe you didn't want to join the class. Or maybe you are trying to see whether you can join the class. Then you found yourself in the class. That's what it means. So communication happens whether we like it or not. The way you talk to other people, your tone of voice, the highness and the lowness of voice, it tells us so much about you. It tells us so much about the task you are giving to other people. So we use communication to express ourselves and interact with others in our lives. Like for example, we are in this class, People will be communicating to me to express themselves. Why didn't you do my assignment? You will communicate to me, Mualimu, please, I did not do your assignment because of A, B, C, D. You are expressing yourself to me. Right now, I was talking to a student, and the student was telling me, I was not able to communicate to you because I lost my, my daughter. I lost my daughter. My daughter was sick. Now, people use communication to fulfill varieties of needs, and they use communication to express and interact with others in our lives or in other, uh, to inter uh, communication is used uh, to interact with others in our lives. Again, it is used to fulfill a variety of needs. We communicate, in other words, for various reasons. We communicate for persuasion. Like for example, you want somebody to you want someone to buy your products and services. You are persuading that person. You are luring that person, or you are motivating that person to buy the product by telling him the importance of the product, by telling him the importance of that service. I say those people who are muting, I mean Tawarusha Inje. Sharon Tanyiri, you will be the first one to, to get out. So I'm removing you from this class. So when you make noise, I get you outside. Sababu hatuta shinda hapo, tutakunyamazisha mpaka sanga. We are wasting time telling you to keep quiet and to mute. So people use communication to fulfill variety of needs. Like we have said, we use communication for persuasion, to persuade others. Like, for example, if you are a, a seller, if you are a marketer, you will use communication to persuade or to lure people or to motivate people to buy your product by telling them the benefit and the importance and the advantages of that particular product. We also use communication to influence the relationship, the relationship between dad and a son or a daughter, the relationship between an auntie and a girl or something like that, the relationship between a wife and a husband, the relationship between a boyfriend and a girlfriend, we communicate most of the time to ensure that we influence that posi relationship posi positively. Like uh, in a situation whereby the relationship is not working, there is a lot of communication that happens so that this relationship can work. Bibi na bwana wanapokosana. Unapata ya kwamba bwana lazima a communicate na familia ya ya bibi. Maybe bibi alichukua vitu akahepa akaenda nyumbani. That time you will find that the, the 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 husband will plan to go and visit the woman, the woman, the 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 the, the, the women, the woman's place, and meet the wazee and talk with them. So to influence that particular relationship. So that the relationship can work positive. To inform, to share. Sometimes we communicate to inform. Like today, when I started the class, I started by introducing myself and by introducing, uh, no, introducing myself and by sharing some uh, very crucial information regarding this particular course. That is informing you and sharing to you uh, information. Also, it is used to discover and uncover information. Communication can be used to discover or uncover information. For example, uh, 
you can ask a question and I can give you an answer. If there is that person who was asked, how do we get the timetable? I've told you, you go to the portal, you go to teaching timetable. Uh, is it teaching timetable? Teaching and timetable, you click on that, then you get your time. No matter your occupation, People spend a great time of a time of a great amount of time communicating. We spend a lot of time communicating. Actually, ninety-five percent of what you do daily is communication. I am not talking about communicating verbally or orally. I am talking about communicating verbally and non-verbally. For example, when you dress nicely communicate much about you. Those ladies who dress clothes that start very late, those clothes that start, or those tops that start very late, and they end very early. You know what we are talking about. Ile nguwa mbo inaanza, imechelewa, na inaisha mapema. It communicates a lot about you. So there is a saying that says, dress the way you want to be addressed. So if you want people to address you, where, 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 you come here. They have looked at the, how you have dressed and they are addressing you like that. If you want people to call you tss, tss, like a pussycat or like a dog, dress the way you want them to address you. If you want people to address you, sir, madam, thank you, boss. Let us meet. Uh, Tomorrow, next, I mean, to put on a kesho, sir, to put on a kesho, madam. Thank you, madam. If you want people to address you like that, dress the way you want them to address you. So, dress is very important. Dress code is very important because it communicates about you. And that's why, initially, to put it to our dog, to put on a juanga muizi, anavanga mangua ya meraruka. Na anava, a, 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 hivi, hivi, tu, anakaki, chokora, plani, tu. But now, the thieves have mastered the art. I was reading something just the other day, and it was talking about uh, the thieves. Nowadays, there are people who are the thieves who are stealing property, uh, not property, items or household items. And they, are, uh, they come to you. They tell you that they are there because of census or something like that. And then they are, they, 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 you, I don't know what they do. And then they carry all the household items. And from, uh, at the end of the message, it was written that these people, they are, they are well-dressed. So in other words, we are saying the thieves, thugs have mastered the art of dressing. They know when they dress very well, you will not su suspect them. So even if they purport themselves to be a uh, government official, you cannot even suspect, uh, you cannot suspect that. Eh? So in other words, we are saying that uh, dressing is very important. And people spend a great of amount of time communicating through dressing, through the way you sit, through the way you walk, through the way you gaze at things. How do people know that we when you mefika Nairobi mara ya kwanza? Ni vile unaangalia building una unazuba mpaka unafungua mdomo chu. Ni kama unataka kukula hiyo building. Unapata wakora wanakufuata. Anytime you go to Nairobi town, you, you lose something. You lost your laptop. You lost your wallet. This other time you lost your shoes. You lost this. Eh? You are threatened with a knife or a pistol or something, or even a, a screwdriver. There are thieves who carry screwdrivers. Una threateni watu kwa sababu wewe ukienda town, mudomo yako ikowazi, macho yako ikowazi, wewe unazubalia a building like that. So that communicates about you. It communicates more about you. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you gaze at things. Huh? The way you sit down, the way you respond to questions and uh, questions and queries, it speaks much about you. Your tone of voice, 
like I can say hi to you and you say hi, that tone of voice, it shows that you are angry or you are not happy or you have just said hi for the sake of it. It's uh, therefore for you to possess excellent communication skills. It's good that you uh, possess good communication skills, whether you are an engineer, whether you are an accountant, whether you are a journalist, because I know I'm teaching some journalists here, it's good to have good communication skills. And good communication skills comes all around, all around. Vilo na nyo nyuele yako, nguo ambazo unava, vilo unatempea, vile unasalimia watu, unawaangalia kwa uso. Like if you say hi and you are facing down, you are saying hi to me and you don't want to maintain eye contact. I will think there is something fishy that you have done. Something like that. So because communication skills are essential in ensuring a professional as well as organization, uh, as well as organization, it is actually we are saying that communication skills is very essential to maintain professional and also it helps the organization achieve their goals. So in this particular lesson, we are going, or this particular module is designed to improve your talent in important areas. So what is communication therefore? I will summarize this whole paragraph with one statement. I don't want to go into uh, communication, what it is. Now communication, we can summarize it, those who are writing, as the process of creating a common understanding between the sender and the receiver. It's a process of creating a common understanding between the sender and the receiver. And communication has been defined by various scholars, Akina Shannon and Weaver. Some people called Shannon and Weaver, Baran. Uh, we have um, so many people who have defined communication. But what you need to know is that communication, there is a sender and there is a receiver. A sender is the person who has the information or who has the message that he intends to send. The receiver is a person whom the message or whom the communication is intended for. So communication is made up of several elements uh, which we are going to look at. Communication is made up of several elements that we are going to look at. And there are eight elements. There are eight elements. Uh, the ones that I have here are six. There are six elements, but to me, there are eight elements. Now, element number one of the communication is the sender. We've already said that the sender is a person who has something to convey, who has some communication to convey or who has a message to convey. The sender can be an organization, the sender can be a person. Like for example, when an organization, when you write a letter, you maybe you write a, an application letter for a job, you apply to APSA Bank, then you are the sender. Then after some weeks or some months, APSA Bank sends you the message. And APSA Bank being an institution becomes the sender. That's why we are saying the sender can be an individual, a person, and at the same time, it can be a company. So the sender sends the information to the receiver. So another element, Another, another element of communication which is not put here is the receiver. The receiver is the person to whom the message is intended. For example, if you want to, to maybe to excuse yourself from the next, next week's class, you send me a message on WhatsApp to tell me, how are you, sir? To, next week, I will not be able to come to class because of A, B, C, D things. Then, you are the sender, and then I am the receiver. I receive the message, I respond to it. One thing you should know about communication, it is cyclic in nature. Why, what do we mean by saying it is cyclic? 
we are saying that sometimes the sender can become the receiver and that sometimes the receiver can become the sender. We, we, we exchange roles. The sender becomes the receiver, the receiver becomes the sender. So sender is a, an element of communication. We have the receiver being an element of communication. And then when you talk about this, the receiver being an element of communication, the receiver again can be an individual or a company. Then we have what we call the message. The message. Message is any information or any idea, any idea that you have, you want to share with the receiver. The message can be verbal, the message can be nonverbal, the message can be written, the message can be any form. It can be in form of an advert, it can be in form of a of a speech, it can be in form of a, a poem, it can be in form of a song. It can also be a laughter. The message can also be a cry, especially those people who have lost their loved ones. When people are burying their loved ones, you hear people crying. Why do they cry? They don't cry because uh, they hated the person. They are crying because they love the person and now they will never see this person. So a, mess, a cry is a message. Even there are these people who win. For example, you win millions of shillings. Maybe you are, you are, even the Gwiji, you are Kubet. Umendo Kubet, Shabiki.com. Ukashinda million in Billy. Kuna wale wanafurai mpaka wanalia machozi. Iyo ni kuonyesha kiwango ya furaha ambayo wakonayo. There are people who cry, uh, there is the cry of joy, there is, there is the cry of pain, and there is the cry of regret. Kuna kilio cha kudhihaki mtu, kilio cha upendo, kilio cha furaha, kilio cha uchungu. Na kuna kilio ambao kilio fulani unalianga tu ya kupretend you pretending so those are the things eh? so message is the idea or feeling of feeling that the sender wants to share so if you have a message you share and the message is usually composed by the sender it's not the receiver that composes the message it's the sender that initiates communication it's the sender that initiates communication. Another element which happens to element number four to include the receiver is channel. Channel is the path through which the message passes. That path that message passes or the path through which the message passes is called the, the channel. Channel can be a TV. It can be a keyboard. It can be can be a radio, can be a newspaper, it can also be, it can be anything that carries the message, anything that carries the message. It can also be WhatsApp, your phone, actually, yeah? Your phone is a channel. You can call someone using your phone. You can text uh, someone using your phone. so on and so forth. And then there is what we call noise. Noise is another element of communication. The noise is anything that is extraneous. Anything that interferes with communication is called noise. Anything, anything that you can, th you can think of. For example, we are in class, and let me pick one student. And Phoebe. Phoebe is wearing a very strong view. So Mr. David is in class, he's teaching communication skills. I'm assuming it's a physical class. Phoebe went to um to, to a, a what? A perfume shop. Put the designer perfume. Very strong perfume. She applied too much of it. And uh, when you are in class, 
we can barely listen to what the teacher is saying. This water to Napiga Chafia, we are sneezing because of the strong fume that Phoebe has applied, has applied on her. Now that is noise because it is interfering with our concentration. Noise can also be also be, let's say for example, you are a market. You have come up with a very big billboard and you have placed it somewhere along the Kasupa Highway. And Mbelea yo billboard amti kubwa. Boy na zuia yo billboard kuonekana. That is noise. Noise that see your makelele at physical makelele, no. Noise can also be you are not able to see the extra bright light. You know, there are people who are very sensitive to light. Maybe we are in class, it is Nimajioni Gioni, and Darasa Imawashi are lights. Now, these lights, they are very bright. To an extent, in a kufanya una unaza ku machozi ananza tu kumuagika enyewe. Ama unasugua macho yako kabisa. That noise, that is noise because it is interfering with the communication. It is interfering with the message you are receiving. So noise can be uh, can be physical. Physical noise, for example, if you live in a place where there is a lot of construction taking place, or there are a lot of hooting, vehicles are hooting. Na manamba wana wana shout hapo akisema tao twenty ama thirty. Is only physical noise. Ama kuna mtoto ambaye anapiga kelele hapo karibu na wewe. Ama kuna masufuria fulani yana yana that is noise. And that noise is classified under physical noise. Noise can also be semantic. Semantic, it comes from the word matamshi. Vira unatamuka maneno. Where you pronounce something, where you say something is semantic. For example, people may misunderstand you depending on how you pronounce something. Like for example, there is a saying that you will hear a teacher saying, Tora Shura. Tora Shura. So, Unashindua, ni Chora Shura, Shora Shura ni nini? Ni Kuchora Chura Amani, what do you mean? Tora Shura. It's, it's, it's noise. You will not understand what that person says. Eh? Or I can give an example of my chemistry teacher. His name was Mr. Mipei. I went to school uh, so many years ago, eh? almost 20 years ago or more. And Mr. Mipei, when I joined Form 1, uh, he used to say, instead of saying it burns chemistry, he taught us chemistry. Eh? Instead of saying the Bunsen burner, Bunsen burner burns with a blue flame. He used to say, a Bunsen burner, it burns with a blue flame. It burns with a blue flame. So we would write the same thing, it burns with a blue flame. Until we came to realize, we, we thought it was a new jargon we are learning from, from the secondary school only to come and realize that it was semantic noise. Uyu ni matamshi, a machine ko kutamuka manene. So that's how it is. So we have noise, semantic noise. Then there is what we call mechanical noise. Mechanical noise come from, let's say for example, you are using a phone and your phone, the network is very poor. Or maybe the earpiece, or is it the mouthpiece? It's, 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 it's not good. So the other person cannot hear you clearly. Una katika katika, sikusiki vizuri. Umenyamaza, sikusiki kabisa. That is called mechanical noise. Mechanical noise. And then there is another noise. We call it psychological noise. Psychological noise is anything that happens in the mind. For example, you are in class right now. But you are thinking of how you are going to, to warm the ugali and kumawiki ambayo ilipakisho jana. Yani you are not concentrating. Akili yako yote iko wapi? Wa ugali ya jana. Or you are in a physical class. Then somebody keeps on writing messages on your phone. 
because that is noise. Maybe you have a sick person in the hospital or you have lost your loved one, you are in class. It becomes very difficult for you to concentrate because it will be very emotional and uh, your mind has been carried away by a certain situation that happened in your life. Something like that. So that is psychological noise. It is, it is in your mind. So whatever is in your mind is preventing you from listening to what is happening, or paying attention. Then there is what we call feedback. Feedback is another element of, 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 of communication. And feedback is a, a reaction, the reaction of the sender, of the receiver towards the sender's message. The action of the receiver towards the sender's message. For example, if Wanja writes me a text message right now, I may not respond to it. Why? Because I'm in class. Or I may respond to it by, by using, using an, an emoji. That is feedback. Feedback can be delayed, it can be immediate. If you ask a question in class, give you an immediate feedback. If you apply for a job at a, Ken, at a Kenya commercial bank, or ABSA, or even Safaricom, it will take time before they respond to you. And they may also not respond to you. Them not even responding to you is a feedback. Feedback can be immediate. Feedback can be delayed feedback. Even keeping quiet when a message has been sent to you, it's feedback. It a message, uka bluetooth, hauku That is feedback enough. Then there is what we call a setting. Setting is the environment. Setting is where the communication occurs. For example, uh, setting is very important. Setting is very important. When you're communicating, consider the setting. Setting simply means the environment. There are some words you can use in a certain setting, and they mean totally different things. For example, this is a class setting. If I say, e class yangu ikonangombe wengi, there are so many cows in this class. What would I be, what will would I mean? I want someone, someone to speak here. Ashley. Nikisema hii darasa yangu ngombe ndiyo zimejaa, nitakuwa na maandisha ni. Ashley, we are waiting for you to speak. Ama ninguwa unafua. Ashley, are you in this class? Usipo ongea nitakurusha inje kwa sababu unafanya vitu kwa fulani mahali. That is the fine, the, the warning. Let me look for some, another person. Sylvia. Sema hii darasa yangu kuna ngombe wengi. Nakuwa na maanisha nini? Sylvia Muchangi. Are there people in this class? Or I'm talking to myself. So these are people who are not following. Sharon Tanyari. What do I mean? What will I be meaning when I say that? Nobody wants to speak. Ositumaliza class hivyo kama hakuna mtu anataka kuongea. 
We are here. But you don't have to speak. Am I speaking alone? No, you are calling out people, so we are listening. No, but they are not talking. Mary, these people are not talking. I don't know whether they are there or they are somewhere else. Maybe they are even doing other things at home. Let me, let me look for another person. Ruth Baluka. What would I be meaning when I say that? Ruth. Ruth Mbaluka, I'm talking to you. You see, nobody wants to speak. Now, uko peke yako uko home. Okay, sir. Yes, I'm listening. Yes. What do I mean by saying that? Or what will I be meaning? By saying that she a tea class yako iko na ngombe wengi. Maybe uh, what can I say? Like we are not understanding or like we are not um, like we are just there to come out to Nakili to come out. That's good. Can we have uh, Doreen or Ivera? Yes. What would that be meaning? I think that is the meaning that it's a class of people who are not listening or understanding what you're saying. Karen Bar eh? Karen, can you switch off your microphone? Karen, can you switch off your microphone or I kick you out? Yes, that's better. Well, we're not picking a kerele sana. Na yo kerele yako ina sumbua maskio sana. Utu halibu ya trams. Yes, when you talk about ngombe, when someone calls you ngombe, ni kama hauna akili. You are stupid. Na nikienda katika shamba la masai ni seme, hii hey, shamba iko na ngombe wengi sana. It means what? Cynthia, Elawan. What does it mean? Or Evelyn Muya. What will, me, will that mean? Kwa katika shamba la masai ni seme hapa kuna ngombe wengi. What will I mean? Or what does that mean? Now that is what we call environment. So whenever you are using what we call uh, a very good example again is hustler. The word hustler, it means a lot of things. And 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 it depends the environment that you are using the word hustler. Because hustler. It means a prostitute. You can go find out. It also means a travel girl. A travel girl is a prostitute. It also means so many bad things. Gold diggers and all those things. But now, depending on the environment that you're using the word hustler, that's when people now get the meaning. Ukitumia hustler kwa vijana wadogo, useme sisi ni hustler. Then it simply means we are trying as much as possible to, to put something on the table or to get something in our pocket. So that's what it means. Environment, when you are communicating to be very careful of the environment. Sabu kuna maneno unaeza sema mahali na ikue haima ina ina si mzuri. Like if you use another word called uh, sugar, sugar is, is, a, is, a, is a good word. But at the same time, it's a bad word. If you're in a group of women and you say this is Uyunishogayangu, what does that mean? 
if you're in a class context and you say, the, Uyu ni shoga yangu, what does that mean? So that's how it is. So setting is another, 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 another what? Another element of communication. So having said that, let us look at features of communication. One of the features of communication is that communication is reversal. You cannot reverse what you have said. If you call me stupid, you cannot take back what you have said. That's why we are told, before you communicate, think. Before you say something, think. Because you cannot take back what you have said. That's, another, that's a feature of communication. Another feature of communication is communication is strategically. It is strategic, not strategically. That we communicate when we want something to be done. When we want something to be done in a uh, to be done. For example, if you want to persuade, you use persuasive communication. When you want, um, for example, to, to to settle disputes. Maybe there are people who have got disputes over land, over marriage. And you use that communication to settle that dispute. If you want to persuade, we talk, we've talked about persuasion. If you want, maybe for example, asking for warn people to use communication to warn, so on and so forth. So also communication is a panacea. Communication is no, it's not a panacea that although communication can be smooth and the bumps, the strength, and uh, it can strengthen the road success, it won't always get you to what, uh, get you what you want. So in other words, you may want to persuade someone, but that person may not be persuaded after all. You may want to settle disputes or kufanya namnagani to 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 clear conflict or to, to 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 make people understand one another and stop fighting. Eh? Now, it doesn't mean that when you communicate to them, conflict with. So that's why we are saying communication is not a panacea. So communication is not a, a medicine to everything. Like if you are selling something to me, doesn't mean that when you communicate to me about that particular product and you tell me the benefit that will buy it. I might also as well not buy that particular product. Again, another feature of communication, communication is a process. It happens so fast that you cannot even tell that it is a process. Communication is a process. It happens so fast that you cannot tell whether it's a process. It's a process that starts with the sender. It goes to the receiver. It goes to the it, from the sender message, then receiver, then feedback, then noise. It's like that. Eh? So it is a process. So having said that, I want you to, when you get these notes, to read the communication model. Models of communication, there is that one for Shannon and Weaver. Actually, this is the process of communication. And then, then there is Shram's model. Shram's model, one with circles, is the one that you will read. And from there, can look at um, types of communication. There are various types of communication. There are four types of communication. Number one, we have intra types or levels of communication. Sometimes in an exam, you may be told to discuss or to explain four types of uh, uh, types of communication or levels of communication, which you might even confuse with modes of communication, which also you may confuse with uh, what we call uh, directions, uh, directional communications. When you talk about um, 
upward, downward, so on and so forth. So there are levels of communication. We have intrapersonal communication. Intrapersonal communication is communication that happens within yourself. Come to Giongelesha, any normal person, they talk to themselves. Any normal person talks to themselves. Even children, children are very good. Ukipata mtoto ameka hapo chini karibu na wewe, anajiongelesha. Anajirudishia maswali. Unasikia anasema, "Eh, hey, kuja hapa. Ah, sikuji hapa. Wewe kwenda." Tutao if anajiongelesha yeye mwenyewe. That is called intrapersonal communication. Every normal person they call, they talk to themselves in the mind. But now there are those who now I don't know whether it gets so intense in the mind that they have to communicate it physically. Mbaka unasikia. Kama watoto. Watoto huwa wanajiongelesha wakicheza. Muto kama ukona mtoto, watch that kid very well. You will see that that kid when he's playing, he's talking to, him, to himself or to herself. That is normal. So interpersonal communication is communication that occurs within us. It involves thoughts. It involves feelings and the way a person looks at himself. Because intrapersonal communication is centered in the, in the self, you are the only center. You are the only center. You ask yourself questions. You answer yourself. You even call yourself. That is, in other words, you come to say that you are the only center. Yo kujita kamkutano do you intrapersonal communication? So the channel is your brain, which processes what you are thinking and feeling, and then it responds to itself. You respond to yourself. Sometimes maybe to maybe to say me umawa yito akwati mahali. Ukendo ukames. The uliendo ukakunyu asana. Ukanza kuchapa watu. Huko unajua kenya unafanya. Watu wakakuchukua sell, picha vilo na endele, video, wakachukua video, alafu ukajitapikia ama ukajikojolea. Then unonyesho video the following day. Then what will be going, uh, ile kitu itakuwe nafanyaka kwa akili yako, utakuwa nasema, I'm so stupid. How did I end up doing these stupid things? Alafu na sasa unanza kuhaibika and so on and so forth. That is called intrapersonal concept. Intra, intrapersonal, inside. Intra comes from inside. Then there is also what we call interpersonal. Interpersonal communication now, it is communication between one, between two or more people. When you communicate to your friend or to a group of people, that is intrapersonal communication. These people will give you information and you respond to them uh, you give them feedback. They also give you feedback concerning something. That is called interpersonal communication. Interpersonal communication. There is direct communication. Direct communication is communication that is very straight to the point. This one happens mostly in the United States of America. Wazungu. Wazungu huwa sana sana wanatumia direct communication. Ukija umechelewa kazini, they tell you, Judith, you are late today. Tomorrow you come late, I will fire you. They tell you directly on the face. Sisi Afrika, sisi huwa tunaficha vitu zingine. If you do something wrong, they tell you. Even if you are vying for, pres for, a, for, a, for a maybe for a, for a position, they tell you that when you are in high school, used to urinate on yourself. They tell you without hiding. Direct communication. Sometimes uh, direct communication is used in various places, like in hospitals. Like umenda hospitali kupimwa, kama ukona HIV and AIDS. The doctor does not hide from you. He tells you, you are HIV positive. Or you are HIV negative. They don't hide. They, they, they use direct communication. Direct communication also can be used. For example, if someone is wants help immediately, maybe nyumba inachomeka, you shout help. 
you don't beat around the bush. Or maybe you are drowning in a swimming pool. You will shout help. That is direct communication. But in most cases, the West, the West, they use direct communication throughout their life. So kienda uko kama mu Africa vile sisi tunapenda kuficha mambo. For example, ulishikwa na bibi ya mtu. Badala mtu akwambie wewe ni ni msharati. Badala mtu akwambie wewe ni ni mzinzi. Ana bit around the bush unajua unajua unajua. In the US they tell you directly. I used to I, I talked to I had a student last semester. She is in Austria. And uh, I happened to teach uh, that student communication skills. And I gave the example of the West versus the Africans, the way we communicate in terms of direct communication and uh, versus indirect communication. And she told me, like if you are fat, they will tell you, I cannot be, I cannot love you because you are fat. They tell you directly. In Africa, unajaribu kuambia bibi, msichana, you know, wewe uko na nguvu, unajua umekula sana, unajaribu, no, it's not like that. In the West, they tell you, I, I cannot love you because you are fat. You cannot be my girlfriend because you are this, you are that. That is called direct communication. There is also what we call small group communication. And in this type of communication, the group must be small enough so that each member of the group has a chance to interact. Now that is called small group communication. That one is direct to the point. Then there is public communication where the speaker sends a message to an audience. Public communication, like for example, the president, when he meets people uh, in a gathering, or in a social gathering, and he speaks to them. That communication is usually known as public communication. Whenever we have direct communication, we also have indirect communication. Having said that, I hope you have understood that comes to the end of our class. Any question? I'm reading your comments. That's why that's why I've gone silent. That's inter, intra, not interpersonal communication. Robin Kome. In Aitwa, intra communication, intra. Interpersonal, the one you have written on the on the on the on the on the chat is between two or more people. meandika kwa chat ni between two or more people. Bruno Idera teacher, when told to differentiate between direct and interpersonal communication, how do you define? We have already said that direct communication is you don't beat around the bush. You say things the way they are. Like Africans, we like beating around the bush. Kupamba vitu ati sinjo isitoke vibaya. Direct communication is when you call a spade a spade, not a big spoon. And interpersonal communication, we have said it's communication between us, uh, between, it's a communication between two or more people. Of course, this interpersonal communication can also be direct. Like when an employee, an employer, an employer calls a meeting with his employees, he can use direct communication. Awaambie nyinyi umekuwa mkichelewa, nyinyi wote, na kuanzia next week, nitawafuta kazi nyinyi wote. Yani hajabit around the bush, amewambie ukweli. Vile mumekuwa mkivamu, mumekuwa mkivamu, kuo, vipaya sana. 
somebody cannot differentiate you between a school going girl and a, a person who works with this company. That is direct communication. So in interpersonal communication, the communicator can use direct communication. While when you talk about direct communication, direct communication is when information is given straight to the point. You hit the nail on the head. You don't beat around the bush. Or you don't uh, try to do what? Try to, 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 to soften or to, 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 to put things to pressing in what you are, you are saying. Like Africans, we are very good at putting icing. Then if something is very bad, you put an icing to eat, but it sounds good. But it sounds, it is not bad. It is equal to a povizuri, to see mbayar, see mzuri, So that is it. Eh? Yeah, uh, 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 so I will tell you where you can get the note. As I've said, there is indirect communication. Indirect communication is communication that is that, he, that, that, that the sender does not does he does not hit the nail on the head. He goes around the bush before he gets to the point. Bala useme kijana wangu alifanya uovu ama mempea kijana msichana fulani mimba. You sugar coat. You sugar coat. You go around the bush. Hili mtu nazima alimpa mimba. Alimvunja mugu. Mtu alivunja mugu na niliona na tempea vizu. Ma alitempele as ilima shamba. Ma. Something like that. Alivuna ama alipanda, alienda kuvuna mahali ya japanda. Meaning you were cheating. Instead of saying he was caught cheating. Alipatikan akilima mahali ya japanda. Hakupa japanda. Something like that. Eh? Uh, currently, DCPY tunafakuwa class gani. Sijui sa kwa sasa. Right now, I don't know. But in the meantime, actually, it is you who is supposed to tell me. Check your timetable. This is who? Samuel Wango. Yangalia timetable ya. Kujue class unafaa kualini na siku gani. But kwa leo ni tafunza. Kwa sababu sisi wote atu. Uh, Panesia. Explain it again. This is Kennedy. Panesia, it simply means it's not a straight thing. It's not a guarantee. It's not straight that when you use communication, this will happen. Kwa sababu communication ineza kutumika kwa mfano kufanya nini? Ku settle dispute regarding land or to settle a conflict. Does it mean that when I go where there is a conflict, the conflict should I solve? That's what it means by financial. Michelle, where are you repeating the personal? What one I have communicated? I've said it. Personal communication is communication between two or more. When you communicate between two or more, is what we call personal communication. I think I will stop there. V2, 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 V2. What I'm going to do right now, I'm taking you to the portal. I hope you can see my port. I'm going to communication skills. This is communication skills. 
somebody is asking me, where do I get the note? Now, this is the meeting about two of Sahi. Uh -huh. now, this is what you do. These notes are hidden from the students. You see where it is written top one notes. I hope you can see that. Eh? Now, I have shown, I have revealed those notes for you. When you click on topic one notes, it will download immediately. This is to introduction to communication skill, wrestling, 1701-2024. Day 1701-2024. So when you click on topic one note, it will start downloading. Let us click it. Eh? Click your file. It has already downloaded it here. So when you click on that file, it downloads topic one. It downloads immediately. So when you open those notes, you will see these are the notes that I was teaching, I was using. It is opening. Hope you can see it is opening. And I hope I'm not talking to myself. Actually, you now know you now open. Moko kwa matatu. Every forty-five. So the notes are opening, but I will not wait for them to open. Now, there are some activities that I'm going to give you. Now, this is in the portal, it's not on the Zoom. Number one is a learning activity 1.1, which is a discussion forum for already unleashed. Also, a quiz is what? Is uh, quiz one. What happens is that when you get to the discussion forum, when you click on the discussion forum, discussion is discuss the best practice of communication where the why is need to have better communication in the organization. Now, this is how you do the discussion forum. You click on the discussion forum. Once you click on the discussion forum, on a David Maina app, you can click on David Maina for 17th January. Then you reply, reply, write your, your message there. After you write your message there, then you post. Once you post your discussion, because uh, I hope that one is okay. Let's put a mutual buy a jashika yo. Sima kupanga na mutu manya na kuanga nyu maev. Tumtu a kuapi. Parafutan yantikia message kwa WhatsApp. I will not answer you. Let me repeat again. Eh? Pardon, please. You naona kuna watu. Echelewa. So, when you go to the portal, you'll find forum. This is where you are coming. Forum. Eh? So, you click on the activity 1.2, which is a discussion. Once you click on it, it will open. Then you will see David Maina. Usi respond kwa watu wengine. Ukipata ashiri yapo si respond here. To respond to David Maina's discussion only. Respond to David Miner's discussion only. So what you do, you click on here. The second one, not the first one, the second one here. Once you click, it will open a dialog box plus the question. So you will read, discuss the best practice of communication and why there is a need to have a better communication in the organization. Post your discussion in the provided discussion forum. So you come here, reply. Unandika, you are reply. Unandika, you are reply. Shamaliza kuandika reply yako. You post. Ebu acha to post here. You post. Now usiandike reply si kumi moja inatosha. Once you post, I'll be able to see it. Now if this one has been posted. 
when I come here, I'll be able to see your discussion. Then I will reply to you. Come on, find the right thing or the wrong thing. But now let me delete that post. So that is how that is how you do the discussion forum. Uh, let's move to something else. It was a discussion. Let's go to. The quiz, this is how you do it. You go to learning activity 1.3. You cannot do the quiz before you do the discussion forum. Not available unless activity 1.2. Activity 1.2 in your discussion. It is marked complete. So you must complete discussion forum before you go to the quiz. You must mark. You must complete discussion 1.2 before you go to the quiz. What you do, you click on the quiz after doing the discussion. You click on the quiz. As far as I'm concerned, it's mine, it will come to view. Then you will find the, uh, an, in a box like this one telling you explain three various models of communication. We explain, we explain, we explain, you finish the attempt. That's how you do the quiz. As simple as that. Unless there is a question. As well, you are down. Yeah, any question? There is no question. So having said that, I'm going to put a recording of this particular class, of a, a recording of a class that was done um, um, some, some, some months ago. And that recording is the one that you will listen. In a tofauti sana na here. So having said that, Enjoy your day. Let's go do that activity. You have until 2 p.m. to finish and submit. Pasawa, sit one Been call me and I say, Mahaoni notes. Sasa and Tafanyaje warne. How do I do it so that you can see? Food. So, having said that, let's meet next week for week two, have a nice weekend ahead. You too.